Well folks, welcome to Coffee with Job, a bit of shortbread with Job actually as well. Animal names, brilliant shortbread. If you're on a no sugar diet, you're in trouble. But we're going to look today at a really interesting question. Now, I've said before that Christopher Ashe's book has been enormous help to me. And that remains true. By the way, we've got this howling gale just now, so I hope that doesn't affect things too much. And it's, Christopher Ashe has been enormous help because he's persuaded me that he, like you, rather than being an arrogant man, young man who doesn't know what he's talking about, is really a, a prophet of God. Verse, chapter 33, verse 1. But now, Job, listen to my words. Pay attention to everything I say. I've got to off my mouth. My words are on the tip of my tongue. My words come from an upright heart. My lips speak sincerely what I know. The Spirit of God has made me. The breath of the Almighty gives me life. Answer me then if you can. Stand up and argue your case before me. I am the same as you in God's sight. I too am a piece of clay. No fear of me should alarm you, nor should my hand be heavy on you. But you have said in my hearing, I heard the very words. I am pure, I have done no wrong, I am clean, I am free from sin. Yet God has been full with me, he considers me his enemy. He fastens my feet in shackles, he keeps close watch on all my paths. But I tell you, in this you are not right, for God is greater than any mortal. Now he says more than that, of course, we'll come to that, but that's enough for today. To say Christopher Ash points out, and I think this is very true, that Elihu asked Job to listen because of his sincerity, verse 3, the spirit, verse 4, his seriousness, verse 5, and his sympathy, verses 6 and 7. He says that Job has said he is innocent, which he has, and that Job has accused God of targeting him unfairly, which he has. And this is the key here. He does not say that Job is suffering because he's done wrong. But he says that Job is saying wrong things about God because he is suffering. Now I think there's something so important in that. Let God be true and every man a liar. To me, it would be absolute hell if God lied. It would be absolute hell if God was unjust. Richard Dawkins believes that the universe has nothing within it, that there's no good or evil within it. These things just happen. Uh, I, to me, that's an awful world to live in. But a worse world to be would be to live in a universe where there was an unjust and unfair God. And that's where Satan keeps coming in to try and get us to think that. Even, I, I don't know if you've ever had that kind of experience, but I have, where you have these blackest and darkest thoughts, and it's almost like accusing God, and then you realize if this is true, what I'm thinking, then everything is in ruins. And of course it's not true. Job seems to implicate God and claim that God is unfair. Now, whether Job did that or not, I, I think he probably did. I think there's a mixture here. But it is the very heart of faith to believe in God's love when all the evidence around us seems to suggest otherwise. In other words, when your circumstances scream out to you, this is unfair, this is not right, this is cruel, this is wicked, this is unjust, Lord, how can you let this happen? I think that it's possible that what Job is, not Job, but what Eli Hughes is saying here is also is that God uh, permits Job to suffer as a warning. And there may be an element of truth in that, but again, remember, Eli Hughes did not know what happened at the beginning of this book. So for me, this is hugely important. And if you're listening to this, I know that some of you have had these dark thoughts, which really are what John Flavel, the Puritan, calls atheistical thoughts. They've come in and they, they've caused you to perceive of God as not being just, not being fair, not being loving. And I think instead of judging God by your circumstances, you have to judge your circumstances by God. All right, I will come back uh, on Monday. Uh, we'll do the Romans Road. I think it's the last one uh, this Sunday, but we'll come back on Monday. Meanwhile, I'm off to the cricket and well, I'm going to finish my shortbread. See you then. Bye.